Okay, on. Yesterday. Yeah, Wednesday. We started taking notes, uh, like the pre-reading notes for the play, The Crucible, which we are going to start reading next week. No. And so we're going to continue those notes today. We got to start with a good book because the last two we started with Tears of Passion and the freaking Game of the Lord was so good. Is the crucible the one with like the witches and the birds and stuff? Yes. So on Thursday, we went through the section on the Protestant Reformation and religion, right? Okay. So today we're going to move into some information about the Puritans. Now you already know some stuff about them because we, well you, watched the Ed Puzzle videos this week. But we are going to go into a little bit more detail about um, some certain elements of the Puritans today. So, first thing. The Puritans had five core values, which really um, determined a lot of the activities, um, lifestyle choices that um, dictated the way that they lived. The first one is called total depravity. Total what? Total depravity. We have to make this is a new uh, This is a new heading. Yeah. Total depravity. Now you probably have never heard the word depravity, but you've deprived. heard a word close to it, which is deprived. Deprived. What does deprive mean? To whack. Okay. Or to not give. Or to like not allow someone to Okay, to not <laughs> to, give. To not to, give. To take away. So total depravity is a philosophy which says that the Puritans should live with as little as possible. So they should live with as little as possible. They should have nothing in excess. The second one is called limited atonement. Sure how you, now, <laughs> you good um, Catholic people know what it means to atone? I know that we're good Catholic people. What? Do you? I'm atone? asking. I atone. I ain't never, never heard that word in my life. No? Okay, so atone means to ask for forgiveness. Oh. Oh, okay. So limited atonement means that God is only so forgiving. How do you even spell that? Atonement? Yeah. Uh, A T O N E. Wait, he's only what? God is only so. God is only so forgiving. Oh. Okay, so one is total depravity. That's how you spell it if you were wondering. You forgot the end in atonement. You say atonement? Huh? Thank you. You're welcome. Number three. Okay. Is irresistible grace. Does this irresistible have an I or an A? You spelled it right. It's Ibble. You know my spelling, Ashley. Irre. 
struggle with. Sorry. That's what you know. Irresistible grace. Oh. I was trying to offend you. Okay. Irresistible grace is related to this idea that some people are elected or chosen by God. And those who are elected have special privileges and powers that the rest of us don't. Now, generally speaking in Puritan culture, the people who were elected served what role in the community, do you think? Who would God choose? Priest. Priest. Well, they don't have priests. They have fathers, pastors, reverends. Reverends or ministers, not priests. Priests and nuns and fathers are related to Catholicism, not Protestantism. So Protestants don't have priests or nuns or fathers or bishops. Well, so if we have bishops. They don't have the same job as bishops. Okay, so... Irresistible grace means there are elected people, and those people have special grace given to them by God. So it is in no one else's right to choose who has power. The only person who gets to choose that is God. God. And Jesus. Okay. We're going to talk about that issue of Jesus. The next one is. Unconditional love. Unconditional election. Oh. oh no. <coughs> okay. Unconditional election means that there are kind of confusing. It really should be conditional election if you ask me. There are certain sins that are unforgivable, which means that God already knows who will be saved and who will not be saved. This idea is also known as predestination. So from birth, some people are unconditionally saved So regardless of what they have done in their lives, they will be saved. In the reverse, some people will be unconditionally damned. So some were saved and some were damned. That's what unconditional election means. Okay. Okay, number five is preservation of the saints. And in some cases, you will see this written as the elected. So, all right, how do I explain this? In the Catholic Church, how did saints come to be a thing? Well, like the people, don't cardinals vote for, or not like vote, but like they decide... Who gets to be okay, so you're asking, like, like what they did to become one, or like, like how did they become they, a thing? Yes. Oh, I have no clue. I don't know. How I got it. Okay, so how do you become a saint now? You're canonized. Yeah, you're like. They you have to do something holy. holy. Okay, you have to be like special. Okay, for the Puritans, it was similar. They believed that these people that were elected were the saints of Protestantism. Okay, so Catholicism has its own set of saints, right? In Protestant religions, we do not worship saints, or worship is maybe not the right word, honor 
what would be the right word? Yeah. yeah. We don't use saints in the same way that the Catholic Church does. But the Puritans kind of wanted to do that. So they wanted to um, establish this philosophy that the elected people in their society were as good as God himself. They were as holy, as righteous, and as right as God himself. The chosen people oh. were as good as God himself. I will tell you on the quiz, some of these are fill in the blank the name. Some of them are fill in the blank the definition. Wait, we have a I think we've got the quiz. <laughs> Second hardest quiz in English. Do you get to use our notes? First one's 10th grade, which you missed out on. What, what, what test was it? The Greek gods and goddess quiz. Oh, yeah, they were talking, saying how bad Tyler Brady got a 6 out of 14. You guys got Tell a on, do we get to use our notes? No. Gus got a 1 out of When do we take this quiz? Probably Tuesday. Tuesday. Maybe Monday. Monday. Okay. Good thing I got good grades. Any so questions about so these? Yeah. So, live with as little as possible. Not all sins are forgivable. The God chooses people to be the elected. Some die. Some die. All die. Some are saved. Some are damned. Those chosen are as good as God himself. That's the five values. You were looking so fall today. Predestination means this idea that regardless of what you do in life, God has a plan for you. Your life has been predetermined by God. So he knows that everything's going to happen. So he knows who will be evil and who will be good. Okay? I'm going to ask him. All right. Next thing. The Puritans felt that they were on a holy mission from God to move to a new place and start a new colony in honor of God. I always found it ironic that they did not name this place something more holy than Plymouth. That's another story. Wait, what do we Wait, so say move. So they were coming to America on a mission, coming to the new world, on a mission from God to establish a new holy place for God. On a mission for a new holy place. Who was coming? The Puritans. New holy place. Part of that philosophy is called the city on a hill. Wait, they came to America, right? Somebody came to the New World. It wasn't America yet, but yeah. Somebody look up City on a Hill. Make place for who? God? It's, it's a movie. We have the movie. Look up City on a Hill Bible verse. You are the light of the world. You are like a city on a hill. It's Matthew like 5, 12. Matthew 5, 14. Or, oh, so close. But yeah, so far away. And what does it say? Ye are the light of the world. Ye. A city that is set on a hill cannot be My favorite Bible verse hit. is Matthew seventeen twenty. Ye are the light okay. of the world. A city that is set on a hill on a hill cannot be hit. <coughs> Read this. Tell me that. That ain't a dope Bible. Is it like a semicolon or a period? After what? Right here. That was a period. Okay, this Bible verse inspired their lifestyle. So Matthew 5.14, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. What does this mean? You are the light of the world. Put that together with what I just said before I wrote City on a Hill. They thought they were going to be the light on the hill that showed yeah. everyone to God. They're on a freaking mission. The, the, the light to whom? 
everybody else. I can bring you the list I have. So they are the light of the whole, like this whole new world that they're supposed to be creating. So everything they did was to set an example for what the future would be. There's actually a line in Hamilton um, during the first, like one of the first scenes after the intermission where Burr and Hamilton are lawyers. And he says, every case that is tried is setting a precedent. This is the first case that's upholding the Constitution. So every case was really important because it was setting a new precedent for how future cases were going to be handled. It's kind of a similar philosophy for these people. Everything they did was the first. So whatever punishments they doled out to people had to be serious enough to try to deter future lawbreakers and also give them a place to go forward from. Does that make sense? Mm. This is going to uh, transition well into the next point here. Okay, another important thing about the Puritans was the way they treated children. Lovely. Bien or mal. In Puritan life, and if you think about what we talked about yesterday, they step off the boat, the Mayflower, into a barren wasteland filled with wild beasts and wild men. Okay? They need every person to be what? A contributor. A contributor to society. So children don't have free time. Children are adults in training. They are expected to act like adults. They're just smaller versions of them. They're not allowed to play. There is absolutely no time for imaginative games. There are no creative outlets for children either, which we know today how important, that, how important it is to allow kids the time to have freedom and play. Like in preschool, um, they go to preschool for three and a half hours, and two and a half of those are spent at their centers, just playing. I read a really interesting article this summer about one of the biggest problems with kids today is all of their time is managed by grown-ups. When I was a kid, during the summer, I didn't see my mom from sunup to sundown. Like, maybe we stopped at home and got something to eat, changed into our swimming suits from the morning, went to the pool, went home, changed out of our swimsuits, went and played. We didn't play in the house. We played outside. Our parents didn't know where we were most of the day. Like, we were somewhere in North Loop. That was good enough. Today, everywhere my kid goes in the summer, guess who goes with him? You. Me. Go to the park, I go with him. Go to the pool, I go with him. Well, not always. I'm pretty lackadaisical about that. But you think about how many adults, how many of you worked at the pool? How many parents are at the pool on a daily basis? Okay. Like, my mom never went to the pool with me one time. I go to the pool with Kellen all the time, but I like to sit in the sun. Yes. Is Kellen a good swimmer? Oh. He, he almost drowned once, didn't he? I'm pretty sure every kid almost drowned once. He used to run and just jump in the pool. He just has no fear. I remember Kobe Scott. He does a pretty good dive. He was trying to swim back and forth. Like, <laughs> he can a dive and flip and stuff. He's, he's a pool rat. Okay. Onward. Okay. Let me make sure I get all the important things here. Far away too. All right. <laughs> By the year 1680. So the Puritans have been living in America no, for no. about 60 years. By this time, okay, if I was on the Mayflower, so I was 30 on the Mayflower, okay, in 1620 I was 30. I probably had at least one child as a 
woman of childbearing age. I probably had at least one child before I died or got too old and useless. So let's say 1650, my child has a child. By 1680, my grandchild is having children. So we are on the second, third, maybe even fourth generation. So the more communities have been popping up around Plymouth. This book focuses on one of the most famous historical cities in America, Salem. And what do we know about Salem, Massachusetts? I don't know. In 1692, the Salem oh. Witch Trials began. Now, these are second, third, fourth generation Puritans. In some cities that had popped up, the level of commitment to the religion had decreased, right? 1692. So in some communities, the dedication to the church had decreased. In Salem, it had increased. So people were even more religious than the first Puritans who came over. Ty said, we have to have contributing members of society. So when the first generation of Puritans were here, they honestly didn't have as much time to worship because they were building homes and churches and plowing fields. By the time we get to 1692, people are a little bit more comfortable in their surroundings. There are homes, there are fields, there are horses and tame chickens and kind of what you think of as an early American village, like those exist. So they have more time to worship. They're a little bit maniacal about their religion. Whatever that means. Oh. The root of this word is maniac, which is a root of the word mania, which is like overly excited, overly invested. You know, oh my brain. The disease that we call today Do you need to take a break? Um, bipolar disorder used to be called manic depressive oh. disorder. So manic Man. is the opposite of depressed. Oh. So manic is on your highest high, depressed is on your low. So bipolar is this fluctuation of highs and lows that are uncontrollable. I'm just telling you that so you can remember what manic and mania mean. Okay, so it's a maniacal society where people are hyper-religious, overly religious, committed to their religion above all other things. So what happened during this time period is really um, still a debate among historians. There are three... Um, explanations for the Salem witch trials. Some historians believe that this event, that there really actually were people who were possessed by the devil. So, so there's three explanations. One of them is that what happened is the truth. There really were people who were possessed by the devil who were doing the devil's work in the town of Salem. Some people believe that it was a moment of hysteria or mental distress or some other kind of mental illness where certain people in the society were actually mentally ill which caused a kind of hysteria a fear that they needed to stop this that they had done something wrong and this is actually true for um, mental illness throughout history sorry so in old times people who had mental disorders or developmental disorders 
people thought that something happened to them. Like there was something wrong with them. What did society do with people like that? Killed, Killed them. them or quarantine? Locked them up in like insane asylums. Good people, answer, good answer. So this this applied to people who were mentally disabled. So people who had um, Down syndrome, autism, bipolar disorder, all of these things that are the way you are when you're born, they just lock them away or they euthanize them. We got a runner. Now, yeah, how do you know if you're bipolar when you come out of the womb? <laughs> well, as an infant, you don't. But I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is, there's nothing that I can do as a person to change that about myself. Yeah. That's just the way I'm biologically made. Not that they got locked up at infancy, but they had been like that since infancy. And One of the dark AD periods AD of American history that we oh, never talk about is how AD people AD treated AD. people with disabilities. Anyway, total side note. Oh my. The third option oh, is so that the Salem witch trials were a form of mania. Which means one idea is blown up. Now, this is kind of like a fad, okay, a trend. Somebody says, hey, let's grow mullets. And pretty soon, everywhere you look, there are mullets. In this case, somebody said, hey, I think she's a witch. And pretty soon, everybody else is saying, hey, she's a witch. He's Okay, but so people just take an idea and go crazy with it. Those are the three possible explanations. So, what really happened, I can't tell you. What I can tell you is the events in this story are historically accurate. The things that happened during the Salem witch trials really actually did happen. Now, whether or not someone was possessed or not, I don't know. But what happened after those accusations were made, I do know. Oh. So, people believe that the devil came yeah, to earth right searching yeah. for people to sign his book. Okay? Like a covenant, a contract between the devil and the people. And so, the devil came to earth. He dressed in sheep's clothing. Even Lucifer... Wait, was that? close to God until the day he fell. So Lucifer was God's best angel, right? Until the day he fell from grace. That baby God be haunted. Okay. The there were four sure signs that you were a witch. Four things you could see. Black dog. Wait, what's we'll say that again? Red cat. Sure signs of a witch. Sure. Wait, how many? Oh, black sure signs. Dog. Not black cat. I know you think red it's black cat, cat, but it's not black cat. So put that in. Black, black dog, dog. Red cat. Yellow bird. Wait, can you say that? White again? haired man. Can you pay attention to me when I'm talking? Oh. I was listening, but you read them so fast. Did you know that black dog was close to me? I thought your earrings were black like Black dog, red cat, chips, yellow bird, white bird. Oh, they look like red cat. Chip things. Yellow bird. Yellow bird. Okay, one of the biggest problems with the witch trials was how do you convict someone of being a witch? Because the only evidence you have is coming man. from the person who you are bird. supposedly bewitching. I'm calling a witch. Black dog, red cat, yellow okay. bird. Okay. White haired man. <laughs> So they <laughs> literally... If someone didn't like you, they could be like, you're a witch, and then... Yes. So they literally <laughs> had trials where they brought in judges from Boston, and they put these women on trial, and there were all kinds of crazy things they did. Like, for instance, anybody know what one of the most famous ones is? No. Oh, she, she looked at me, she, and they turned a stone. How did they check if you were a witch? Killed her. They, um, they threw you in a... Okay, one of them was a fire. Okay? If you burned alive, you weren't a witch. Whoops. 
<laughs> Sorry, our bad. And if you didn't, you were a witch because you could somehow prevent yourself from being murdered. And then they killed you anyway. If you're a witch, how can you get killed though? Because they would find other ways to kill you. I'll talk about that in a second. Another one was they threw, they threw them in the lake because witches always float. So if you managed to float, you wouldn't drown. So you were a witch and you were killed. But if you sank, you weren't a witch. But darn it. Now you're dead. You just gotta hold your breath. No, but what if, what, if, what if you held your breath and you let yourself fall and then they're like, all right, all right, she ain't a witch. And then like, uh, they really pulled it back up and then you were like, some, you did uh, leave, some of the ways they killed thing. people during this time. Obviously, the most common, uh, we Gotten think of off. being burned at the stake mm-hmm. as a very common way. Um, actually, not the most popular. Most people were actually hanged. Hung. Hung. Hanged. They were hung. They were hanged. They were hung. They hung at the stake, but they were hanged. No! What? Time out. Hanged. Hanged. Not a word. Hanged. How is hanging? Hanged is it's word. not even a word. Yes. No, you can't. Look it up in the dictionary. They were right hanged. Now. They were hung. Okay, Miss Sutherland. Another really horrible way to die was to find a large boulder or as big of rocks as you could like and to gone. lie you on the table and they'd and they would drop on press people. you. So they would put these heavy stones on your chest. Until they suffocated you. Yeah, that's how my friend died. Because he didn't actually die from the car landing on him. He died because it landed on him for so long that he just like couldn't breathe it. So they would put the rock on you and they would say, Are you a witch? And you would say no. And they'd put another one on you. And then they'd say, Are you a witch? And you would say, No, please save me. And they'd put another one on you. And then they'd say, Are you a witch? And you'd say, Please don't kill me. And they'd put another one on you and eventually you died. You so no matter really? what, even if you you if you got took in the yes. trial, you're dead. Now there was one way that you could save yourself, or at least prolong your life, and that was to just confess. I and in wish. some cases, if you confessed, you would be jailed and put onto trial, and then your best bet would be to accuse someone else of causing you to be a witch. Then they would get arrested, and you'd probably be let off the hook because they have someone else. To burn at the stake now. Kate Ooh. made me. She made me a witch. Now, I have, um, I, generally speaking, there's two kind it's of. It's not a word. There's two ways that people feel about um, this book. Some people just think it's so interesting that this happened. Some people find it so ridiculous that it's hard for them to buy into it. And I will say, um, it is word. weird, but we're going to.